Welcome everyone to a new gameplay series on Software Inc. Software Inc. is a tycoon game. I know I've been mentioning for a while that I wanted to put a tycoon game on my channel and uh, I was really leaning towards like, was it Railroad Fever or something like that? But um, this game appeared and I, I like the dynamics of it so I figured let's just put this one up. Um, this is a game very much like Game Dev Tycoon and uh, it's just another, I would say it's another spin-off of that very successful, um, very popular early title. Uh, the only difference is, as kind of its name implies, that um, you're able to do more than just develop games. With Game Dev Tycoon, you would choose you know, a variety of genres of games, almost a ridiculous number <laughs> of genres. And in this one, you don't have to just limit yourself to game genres. You can actually do game engines. On top of that, you can even just do operating systems or music software or content management systems. So I, I enjoy the additional complexity that you don't have to focus purely on being a game development studio. Although there are less options available in the game genre, uh, to me the most striking omission is there's no action field for making a game. <laughs> but um, that aside, I think that the that this kind of game with the software instead of games actually plays out a little bit better. Now there is an element of this game which you may or may not enjoy, which is um, much more pronounced than it was in the other game dev type games I've played. Um, and that is The Sims. You know, there's a lot of customization. You can, like this is a building, this is my most recent playthrough by myself. And you design this building yourself and you can change the colors and everything. So that may not be um, everyone's cup of tea, but the good news is that a lot of that customization stuff is uh, skippable or just you can neglect it entirely and it won't impact anything. So um, I think that you'll probably do a little bit of it because you'll start to pride yourself on how well your company is, but some of it is functional too. You have to design a building which is functional if you're, you know, you can waste time just having things arranged in the wrong way. But that's, that's probably enough talking, enough of an intro. Let's just uh, go through uh, character creation. I'm gonna start with my company name being Turtle Shell Scripting. And I like this because the turtle shell refers, refers back to me, Tortuga Power. But also the shell script is something that Unix users would be familiar with, I imagine. And it's a kind of, for those who are not familiar, it's just like a programming term. And I'm just trying to be clever here, so forgive me. Anyways, let's uh, let's try and kind of blow through the Sims elements a little bit. Uh, let me just reverse everything that they have here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's probably fine. Thick eyebrows, less curvy. The stuff at the bottom is actually going to affect gameplay, like your ability to especially lead, program, all this is really important. Even your personality has an impact on game stuff, but let's just go through the rest of this really quickly. Let's take off his beard. Um, I'm glad that he's already wearing a suit. I'm not sure if I want the pink, but and let's go with these pants. We'll put some glasses on, I'm sure, and now the joy of trying to get the right color. To me, something like this is a little bit better. That's the eyebrows, we'll apply it, but the good thing is you can copy and paste, so I can paste this in for my hair, and we'll make it a little bit lighter, because hair a little bit lighter than eyebrows makes sense to me. Okay, so torso, let's leave that for just one second. With the legs, what are they going with here? Looks like they went with like a very, like a gray. But I am going to go with, if I can find it, it is a pain in the butt to try to get. Like, this looks fine, but I look over here and that's not khaki at all. At least not how I imagine it. So, where's the khaki? It's some really fickle... <laughs> it's really hard to find. Uh, whatever. Is this is khaki. I don't know. But good enough. I should have stuck with the gray pants. Would have been easier. Um... Okay, so for torso, apply that. I want to go with a, I think I'll go with a navy blue suit. How does that sound? Sounds good to me. So we'll just make this navy blue, pretty dark navy blue. It's very trendy right now. And why not have 
our shoes match our coat. So there it is. You know what? That's fine. Enough customization. The last thing I'm going to do is very quickly change this to um, black glasses. And we're done with all that. Okay, so personality. This does affect things. So hard worker versus fast learner. I think this speaks for itself. But um, I think it's the preference I would have is to lean towards hard worker because uh, you can educate your person so you don't even need to learn on the job very quickly. But hardworking means that at a given tier, assuming that your education is the same, the fast learner will educate faster. But if your levels are the same, the hard worker will be more efficient at work. So since you can max out on learning, it's better probably to just uh, be a very hard worker and educate yourself to learn the stuff that you would lose not being a fast learner. As far as independent or social and lazy and stressed, these things are not going to impact your character directly because your character doesn't suffer from any of the quote unquote needs that your other employees will, such as needing to take a restroom break or eating food, all those things. Your um, founder, the one character you can't fire, he's immune to all that. So this actually doesn't matter for us, but um, social is supposed to be better for a leader, so we might as well get that. And I don't really know how lazy or stressed really plays out, since our character won't get stressed. I suppose lazy is bad because they'll try to get out of work as much as possible, and um, since we don't suffer from stress, having our character work really hard all the time might be a little bit better. But I'm not going to min-max all that stuff. I'll min-max the skills, but I'm not really uh, comfortable enough with all the op options to know how the effects play out. What I'm going to do is, I want to make myself a leader very uh, later, but ironically, I'm going to actually just completely drop my leader skill a whole bunch because um, in the very beginning of the game, the leader skill is not going to help you, well, obviously at all. You're just a one-man team, so it's not really going to do anything. The main thing we want to get up is programming and design. Both of these need to be like really, really high for us to have a really good start to our game. Um, Artist is low and market is low, but probably not as low as leader if you want to be like min-max to the extreme as I'm going to do. Um, excuse me real fast. Then as far as specialization, well this should be impacted by your start year, but for 1980, which is probably when most people are going to start, I would say 2D is the best option. It's the, the most used. Our skill skills actually higher than I actually wanted it. Uh, yeah, but that, that seems fine. Uh, so if you go with system, that's for operating systems, but 2D is going to be helpful for a lot of things. It, audio is a, useful a little bit later. So operating systems don't start off with audio capabilities. I don't even think a lot of game stuff does. So audio is not useful immediately, um, just, only for a very few things. But it grows to be quite popular later. At the same way, 2D will kind of fade away, and 3D will become more popular when you get towards the late 90s. Anyways, this is the configuration I'm going to use. Now, I find this game particularly easy. In fact, I'd almost find it easy to a fault. So I'm going to start with as little money as I can. I'm going to set the difficulty to hard, but you're going to see how this just doesn't play out much at all. So that's good for us. I don't really care about the environment. I don't really understand what it, how it affects Besides like desert being hot and tundra being cold, it doesn't matter because I think air conditioning and heaters are really easy to just put in. So there it is. We have our game set up. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, um, I've deactivated all the tutorials. I'm going to blow through some of the entry level tutorial stuff. If you own this game, you might play through the initial tutorial. I recommend it. I played it through it several times, actually. <laughs> so uh, that's my recommendation is uh, to do that. But the very first thing you're going to want to do is go to build mode because we don't have an office space yet. Now, with the hard settings that I've chosen, we actually need to build just a really pathetically small original office space. And for us, that's going to look like just, uh, oh, I think this might be, is this too quiet? Let me check the sound when I place something else, a door. Yeah, okay, that sound looks like it's coming out about right. Um, so we need a really tiny office space, but again, our character's not really affected by needs, so this shouldn't matter. I don't even need a window, but I'll put it in just for fun, so everything looks better. Uh, I think 
everything is done with the construction, so let's move on to furnishing it. And although I just talked about all that, I'm gonna put the glass tables in right away, holding shift to get multiple items, because I don't think it's necessary. The, the difference in cost is so minor, I might as well start using the table, which eventually my computers are gonna go on. So of course we need a chair and all this. It's complaining about temperature. We'll get to temperature in a moment. I'm actually gonna first start off by decorating the rest of the room with some, okay, function, productivity stuff. Having a bookshelf supposedly helps skill. I don't know what that means, but it helps skill somehow. <laughs> uh, our character for the very beginning, there's different accessories you can add to your desk. You can get a phone, tablet, calculator, or inbox. And these help respectively the marketer, the artist, the programmer, and the leader. Now you'll notice I didn't mention designer because actually the tablet and the inbox seem to equally help the designer and not by as much as the artist and the leader respectively. So the, art, the designer doesn't really have um, a specialized item. Because of the beginning work we're gonna do is mostly programming and designing, I'm therefore gonna take the programming option. Even though it has slightly less on designer, it has a lot more on programming than the other options available to us. So let's get that, and there we go, there's our setup. So this is just supposed to add productivity. I don't really know the difference, I just know that it's supposed to work that way. So we will do it. Next thing we want is staff. No, I want, it should be under productivity, but let's just say, okay, there's the clock. Because this technically helps effectiveness somehow. So we'll put a clock above our computer that helps us with some effectiveness. And finally, we can add temperature stuff, which our person doesn't need, but actually our equipment can be affected by temperatures. That's, I think that's pretty neat. Like if you have a really hot room, uh, your computer can overheat, become less effective. So we'll add uh, a ventilator and a radiator to control temperature. Then the last thing we're gonna add is lighting, even though, again, character doesn't really need it and this is another situation where I could just add a normal lamp but I'm gonna add this one because it adds more environment and uh, I'm also gonna reduce the grid size so I can get this closer to the middle <laughs> maybe I can get this thing to right-click move a little bit closer there I kind of like it so that we spread it out a little bit and now I'm gonna return that grid size to default most of the stuff so you can see there's a little bit of Sims element, like where exactly do I want to position stuff and whatnot. Uh, I did miss one thing. Uh, productivity needs, needs maybe? Coffee? Espresso machine, there it is. I want to make sure this is the most expensive. It is, very good. So this actually does give your uh, people a boost to their productivity, which is great. You can actually see it on the character where their uh, gear measuring their effectiveness or reporting their effectiveness actually goes up to like 250% after they have coffee. So now uh, another Sims element we're gonna get into. I'm not gonna delve too much into this, but you can also vary like the layout, at the sorry, the look of your rooms. Excuse me, cup of tea. Uh, so the outside we're gonna make brick. I think that that makes sense. The interior, you can make different wallpapers. I'm gonna leave it plain. And the floor, you can have this like nothing, which maybe is carpet, maybe is something else which doesn't have any lines. I'm gonna use this crisscross wood because I think it looks nice. We apply that. The last little customization you can get into is colors. I think a brick should probably have some kind of red outside, right? Makes sense, seems to make sense to me. The interior, I like to have kind of like a light blue. Really light blue though, very, very faint. And for the floor, we probably need something like brownish because wood, and that looks fine to me. So there you go, there's your Sims type elements. It looks, I mean, besides being just a shack, a tiny, tiny shack of a workspace, the colors I think look nice. So that's gonna conclude our build mode. We have everything we need. Now our character doesn't join us until the next day, but uh, ironically, we actually don't want to click this if we want to min-max to the extreme because we can actually take 
uh, at midnight, we can take a project and begin working on it due to the magic of the mini games. So let me kind of explain the contract work. We're just going to take something here, which we prefer for the required quality to be horrible, because that means the amount of work we have to put into it to make it good enough is much less. Unfortunately, these are all mediocre, but we should get some new um, contracts available to us after uh, midnight. So let's see if that happens. Closer. Okay, and did it work? Yes, so it looks like we have a few more. And look at that. Now, unfortunately, I'm not a very good artist, and this right here is reporting how much of the like production or how much of the work is going to have a touch of artist skill to it. This means that this one's really heavily influenced by art, which we aren't good at. Uh... Wow, we just don't have very good options. You know what, the bad is not, the bad is a, a good option for us. So this is command line, which is uh, I think system, but that works really well for us. We're pretty good at that. Like if we wanted to see our character's skills, let me just go, oh bollocks, I forgot to manage his team hours to make his eight to six I find is the max that employees will work. So I usually switch it up to that. Unfortunately, he's not gonna work that long for the first day because I didn't set it prior to midnight. That's okay. We'll set that to be his time after after this uh, the first month because one day is one month. So we'll accept this work, and this is the glory of the early game is that you can use these mini games. So even though I'm not at work, if I just connect these boxes a number of times that the box says so one one that eliminates both of these. This is two and one one and one. So you can see you can make this circle for twos, etc. And you can see that although our character is not yet in the work environment, we're gaining whatever the value or what I don't even know how to talk about it. We're gaining advancement towards a finished product. So this is kind of a cheaty thing you can do. And our character should be coming in at, okay, I need to start focusing. Sorry, there I got close. Uh, our character should come in at eight, so it's just about there. Uh, we're almost there. Okay, now I wanna hit escape and cancel out. This purple line indicates the necessary quality for the job we've been contracted for. And we can see my progression is now past that, so we can just develop. And the good news is here, Tortuga, so I'm very good at designing code. It's hard to see this bar ends exactly where the next screen begins is what I'm led to believe. So my base skill and my 2D are really, really high. I'm not that great at system. My audio is decent. We'll educate those out higher later. Now note that my art is pretty terrible because you know I chose low art and pretty low on marketing. Very, very, very low on leading, but by the time we need to lead, we'll just invest a lot of money in learning how to be a leader. So that is uh, the first phase of a contract. The next, so this is the design phase. Now we can actually put this into alpha. Now it's in alpha. We have another typing mini game, which I have to prepare for. Actually, the typing will be over pretty quick. So we just type words and you can see each one of these jumps are uh, thing by a lot in the top right and escape we're past where we need to be we'll promote that one and it looks like we, I mean we have a month left but we're already in the delay phase which you just let run so we'll let this run and now we're in the beta phase which you also just let run there's no mini game which works for this and then when it's done we release now if we want we can pause and look at the quality of our product one we finished it a month early because we accepted it at like just past midnight and they were giving us a month to do it, which means they would give us until the day's end of the next day. So you can think of one month for us since one day is one month as just one day. We finished it on the zeroth day, essentially, which means we finished it early. And almost, I would say 99% of the time, even a perfect finish gives you one bug. So that's completely fine. And the net profit means that 
By the way, I didn't mention this, but they do give you an upfront payment of like in this case, a thousand, it's usually about 10%. And then the rest they pay you only once you're done. So even on the hardest difficulty setting with the um, lowest amount of starting money, we can see I'm already up to 12,000. That I'm not trying to do anything <laughs> amazing here. I just took my first contract and I've already doubled my original starting money. So now probably you need about 50,000 before you start your developing your first software or that's a nice, very comfortable number you can start doing it with. So what we're gonna do is develop one more contract. I know I saw a horrible in there. There's a bad with 100% artist, not good at all for me. A good with 0%, a mediocre with 0%, and a horrible with 100%. Well, I'm actually gonna take this horrible with 100% because it's surprising how horrible you can be at it. So we'll accept, and we're just gonna rely on our mini game aptitude to solve this for us. So it's barely going, but it will go a lot faster once we connect some boxes. Let's do this and this. Uh, well, we lost that one. We're almost past. This should do it. It did. So we develop. I want to get. Uh, we're not going to finish with this one early. But the good news is, I can actually let this run. We're going to leave. But the magic about these mini games is that you can let them run overnight. So my character is gonna get up and leave in a minute here. He probably already did. And I am gonna continue our mini games to give us points towards the next development phase overnight. So that's where the mini games really pay off. Now I should say about the mini games, if you don't play the tutorial and you didn't find this out, they only add a fixed amount, which means that for small projects, they're very effective, but for big projects, they're terrible because they only give you a fixed amount. So if it's not a game breaking thing, it doesn't finish an, a small project for you. So you can imagine how ineffective it is on big, big projects. This is intentional and I think it's a really good design decision so that basically when you have a lot of people to micromanage, you don't have to worry about um, doing all these little mini games. They're only in the beginning when you don't have enough people to manage anyway. Okay, I have to start focusing here. Ah, I finished. Okay, so we finished at four, uh, 2 a.m. and we just go the rest. Anyways, uh, in the beginning when you have this downtime, like we don't have much to do right now. So we just wait. Oh, I will promote this, and but he needs to get here so he can finish. Oh, there he goes. If I click on him, he has this 100% effectiveness. It doesn't go up for him, I think, because my character is just unaffected by everything, but um, that coffee would normally boost their effectiveness up to like 100, no, 250, I think. Anyway, we're slowly making our way towards this street fan. It won't be finished early, but it will be finished perfectly, or as perfectly as we can. Pause it real fast so we can see the next, um, we can see how we did on that. It was finished on time, but actually this one had zero bugs, which is amazing. Um, even though bugs don't get penalized very much for a horrible expected quality we had zero and that's very 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 rare so now I think I'm gonna put a cut in the video here and what we're gonna do on the very next video is actually start developing our own software I yeah I think we're ready to do so and there's a lot of options open to us so what we'll start off by doing is actually looking at the competition we want to see what are the upcoming releases and we also want to see what is the quality of the current software in the market for the various regions. So if we look at operating systems and sort by active users, wow, all the most popular software is great. Well, that's a pretty intimidating field to get into. What about CMS? This is usually a place where I sneak in in the very beginning. So financial has great, good, good, good. Well, that's a little bit of room to work with. You know, there's a few products that are only good quality. Let's check out workflow. Great, great, good, great. But even one down here that was mediocre, I guess it's not being used anymore. So between those two, I guess it's about even, probably financial is a little bit better since a lot of the software is only good quality. But, um, you know, we can just skim through all these, which we'll do next time to find a nice little field where our fledgling company can jump into. But that's gonna call it for this video. So thanks for watching. Uh, because this is the first video in a series, even though this might be a shorter series, just to really demonstrate this game uh, and then maybe not play it for, you know, more than 
10 episodes or so. But since this is the first episode, if you wouldn't mind pressing the like button, giving me that thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it just for visibility on YouTube. And other than that, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.